Let's talk about paroxysmal sympathetic hyperactivity. So this is a disorder of autonomic dysfunction and it's normally acquired after a acute brain injury. The most common population would be in traumatic brain injury patients in either moderate or severe injury and it'll occur in about 10 to 20 percent of these cases. There are some other rare causes such as encephalitis, ischemic brain injury, anoxic injury, and some others as well. So what will it look like? So normally it'll happen in a unresponsive patient. Uh, after a acute brain injury, they'll start having these recurrent episodes of sympathetic dysfunction that can last minutes or up to 30 minutes. Uh, these symptoms will include tachycardia, hypertension, tachypnea, diaphoresis, uh, sometimes fever, and sometimes dystonic posturing. It normally presents about a week or two after the brain injury. And sometimes there is no trigger, but other times it can be triggered by stimulation, such as endotracheal suctioning or repositioning or loud noises or urinary retention. The diagnosis is based on uh, clinical history and exam, but testing can be done to rule out other conditions. Sometimes the dystonic posturing can look like a seizure, and so an EEG can be done to rule that out. So care revolves around reducing triggers. So these patients are normally in a ICU level of care. They're usually getting ventilated. We want to reduce noise and other stimulation, uh, try to treat pain, for the fever, we can give antipyretics and cooling measures. These sympathetic episodes can cause you to become dehydrated, so we want to ensure proper hydration and electrolyte balance. Uh, we want to adjust caloric intake because these episodes can be metabolically demanding. And if we know that physical therapy and occupational therapy if they do not trigger these events, then we should uh, consult these guys to help us in preventing contractures from these episodes. Pharmacologic treatment. So there are both abortive and preventative agents. Preventative agents include gabapentin, clonidine, propranolol, benzos, and baclofen. Uh, abortive treatments can include morphine, clonidine, propofol, benzos, and dantrolene if there's refractory posturing. This will help us prevent contractures. So the prognosis. So if a patient with a traumatic brain injury has paroxysmal sympathetic hyperactivity, that's normally associated with worse long-term functional outcomes. There are longer hospital stays as well, higher rates of tracheostomy and enteral feeding. The disorder lasts up to weeks to months, in most cases resolved by one year. Uh, however, anoxic brain injury cases are more refractory.